Good for those in the Twitch stream or those watching the replay on the YouTube channel. This is your boy Flock, and this is the Triple Threat Sports Podcast. This is the Super Bowl. What number is the Super Bowl, man? Fifty-one. <laughs> fifty-one. What's your name bro? is Nick. I forgot that quick, man. L I. Yeah, we on fifty-one. Man. I don't think. And the title of the stream? Um, I don't know. Oh yeah, well, yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah Super Bowl L I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't looking at it, man. <laughs> I wasn't even looking at it. All right, but anywho, yo, this is your boy Flock, man. I'm hosting. I'm running it this time, man. And uh, well, I can't say to my left. I say because uh, it's, it's three other people in here. Um, we got Siggy Guns in here. Say what up to the people. What up? What up? We got Ace of All Trades. Say what up to the people. That's good. And then we know we got the we got the homie. We got the cousin of the sport co- podcast back with us yet again. UTX JG the Don. Say what up. What up? What up? Alright, so um y'all already know man, this is the biggest the biggest uh sports spectacle in the world. I don't care what anybody says about, you know, World Cup and all that shit. Super Bowl is the shit. We all know that. I mean we know soccer is the biggest sport in the world, but this is the biggest event. I'll say that. This is definitely the biggest event. Uh, a lot of money being made, you know what I mean, when the Super Bowl hits. So uh um, yep, a lot of sports bets, you know. Yep, a lot of that. Um so we got the Atlanta Falcons going up against the New England Patriots in the Super Bowl. And before anybody throw this shit in my face, yes, I said the Falcons wasn't going to do shit. Yes, I did say that. <laughs> so y'all can't We all you. did, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, we all said it. I know some people in the last, uh, what you call it, uh, they did when I wasn't around because I was sick. Uh, they kind of went at JG, but it was me that actually said it. That was like, uh, the Falcons are gonna lose the first game they play and stuff like that. So, you know, I'll, I'll admit, you know, I was wrong on that one, but I will say this they still gonna get the ass beat. So, I wanna oh, know, boy, to all you Falcon fans, when did they change? From... Right, to all you Fairweather Falcon fans that came out the woodworks, you know, Atlanta, y'all don't support y'all teams until they, <laughs> until they start winning. Just like Miami, y'all don't support y'all teams until they start winning either. So, don't start trying to throw no shit in my face because you can tell me four people on your team. So, <laughs> damn. Uh, so let's not go there because I'm seeing when mad when empty. when did the Falcons go to rise up after the Dirty Bird? Because I remember the Dirty Bird back then. What happened to that? I think Rise Up has been like that for like the past like maybe a couple of years. Why? Where, where did that come from? I, I I don't know. You tell me. Uh, the Dirty Bird was popular back when you know they had Freak Nick and you know all when, that stuff. You know when it was popular? When they when they, was, when they were winning. The last time they were winning. That's <laughs> yeah. what I said. Yeah, the last time they had a good team in '98 when they went to the what, they went to the Super Bowl, right? Yep. Yeah. When they beat the Vikings to get there, man, that was. Mm-hmm. Ah. Yep. So yeah, you know how it goes. So we'll we'll go around the horn, man, real quick around the table. I don't want no copyright. You know, nobody coming at us saying we still in nobody format. We'll go around the table. I'll start <laughs> with Ace. <laughs> we'll start with Ace. Ace, give me your prediction and uh why do you think that team is gonna win? So we you know we, we just gonna get we gonna get quick and to the point, man. We're not gonna talk y'all heads off our head today. I mean, honestly, the way the Atlanta Falcons played against the Green Bay Packers really showed a lot off at Matty Ice out here doing putting in work i can't honestly say that new england is going to come into the super bowl and just run them over and it's just going to be easy super bowl win i think it's, i believe it's going to be close and i do believe it can it, it's going to go down to till the last drive i mean let alone when new england uh won the other the uh the latest year they got off of a bullshit pick when they should have ran it with marshawn lynch so I feel like it's this Super Bowl for them is going to be it's going to be a close game, and I actually have the Patriots winning by three. Mm, is that it? Yeah, I think <laughs> I, I got them win. I got them winning by three. by three. I, I don't. I don't so, think it's. All right, I, so I, I don't, me, all right, so let me get this right. You said the Falcons goal. are impressive. They beat the Packers. They did all this, and and the Patriots are not going to be that good. That they're lucky, but you still got them winning. <laughs> is that what you're saying? I, I still, I actually still have them winning. I, I feel like, I feel like uh, Tom Brady's going to get that other the, the, his next Super Bowl. I feel like he's going to solidify himself even more. Even though I think he's a bitch. I mean, at the end of the day, he's still a great quarterback, and I can't deny that. But he's the goat. He, he he can't be the goat to me because he's a little baby back bitch. I mean, anytime he gets touched or anything like that, he expects a flag to be down. But at the end of the day, like I said, as an athlete, I mean, and as a quarterback, he makes amazing decisions and everything like that. And he makes 
the team around him great, which is why I can see New England still winning this. Like that's the whole purpose of being an amazing quarterback is because the fact that you make no matter what who your teammates are better and that is something that he can do i mean it would be great for atlanta to get another super bowl i definitely do think they deserve it they've been busting their ass the entire season It'd be cool to see julio jones get one uh get a super bowl for himself and dwight freeney shout out to him she's a cute alumni uh, but i just think at the end of the day uh new england's gonna come out and win it's gonna be close it's gonna be a close game it's gonna be a good game all righty siggy what's your thoughts man Look, I've been saying it from the beginning of the year. That deflate gate stuff, Brady being suspended, they all want to rub it in Goodell's face. I think the Falcons have a very good team, but no, I don't see it being close at all. I think the Patriots are going to go in there and steamroll them. I think what we've seen is the Packers' horrible defense yep. is why the Falcons look great. Now, don't get me wrong. We saw them beat Seattle pretty convincingly also, but... Seattle's always been a good defensive team at home all the time. It's on the road, that's when they're beatable. So True. I can't even say that that was great defense by the the you know the Seahawks. So that the Falcons were facing. So I, I do think that they have a very good team. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Matt Ryan is somebody that usually falls under pressure. Uh, it's it, it's bound to happen. It hasn't happened yet. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen in the Super Bowl. I just think the Patriots are built better. I think they have an all-around team, you know, defense and offense. You can't say the same about the Falcons. They have a great running game. They have a great offense, but they have no defense either. So I, I just think if you're just looking at it like that, the Patriots should win easily. I say 14 so, points minimum. So you so you saying that's going to be like how it was? The, remember the Tampa Bay Raider game and like everyone thought that the Raiders were going to win it. Who thought Tampa that? Bay Who just, thought that? Only a fool I, thought that the Raiders was going to win that. I that's what that I'm Super saying. Bowl. You think you think that you think that's what's going to happen with the Falcons? Uh, there's going to be a blowout. No, I just Falcons think I just think I just think the Patriots have. I mean, you you don't need Tom Brady to have a chip on his shoulder or anything like that or extra motivation, but he has that now. I mean, that's what's true. This is somebody that has been casual, laid back, and now he's making commercials, taking digs at Roger Goodell. And 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 Kraft has been talking, still chirping about it. And Belichick has been chirping about it. I mean, this is all three of those guys mad about it. They're going to they're gonna make sure that Goodell hands them the trophy in the podium. I, th I just think that that's the ultimate goal in the end. And I think they might all retire after that. <laughs> Nah, you could go back. You can you can go back to one of the, one of the older uh, triple threat podcasts we did when we were talking about him getting being suspended for four games. The first thing I said was, "I'm like, it really doesn't matter. They still gonna end up in a Super Bowl." I said, that. "Yeah, yeah, like, they still gonna did. end up in a Super Bowl. Nobody's gonna beat them in the AFC." So, all right, uh, Davidson, JG, what you think, bro? Well, I mean, I was wrong about the Falcons and the Packers. I, I couldn't bet against Aaron Rodgers, but he got destroyed in that. Uh, so Falcons did at least show a little bit of defense there. Um, looking on paper as far as like big names, um, obviously like the Patriots have a lot of playmakers that Brady just makes look amazing. And uh, they've always been a, a team that's uh, that has a lot of good uh, good um weapons that are good after the catch so as soon as they catch the ball like they're going to get yards regardless um but as far as big names and like i was saying even though i rooted against the falcons against the packers it, i feel like it all comes down to uh, two things uh definitely the falcons running back and julio jones and the only thing that's really stopping julio jones is himself um he's been uh injured he's had those toe problems basically the entire year um so if julio is actually ready which he says he is um i, I still don't know if he's going to be 100 percent. but i feel like if julio jones can make an impact on his game it's going to be hard um but still with that being said i'm going to have to go against the falcons again um just realistically i will never ever root for the patriots to win never ever in my life but just being realistic i think that the patriots are going to come out with this one and like you all mentioned uh already it's it just too many things on uh, uh on the patriots side that it, it just seems like it's going to go that way like uh, all these uh all these news uh news rumors and and everything else just about goodell and, and i'm tired of hearing about it to be honest but it, it's just going to happen i just think that, that uh Goodell is going to hand the Patriots the uh, 
the trophy again, and uh, Tom Brady's gonna gonna come out on top. Even though I don't know why any Patriots fans were worried, because uh, I I even said that same thing. I was like, so what if he's if he's uh, gonna be suspended four games? He's still gonna come out, y'all. Still gonna be good. Like it's AFC East. Come on now, like the AFC East is bad. So I wouldn't expecting them to be hurt in any uh, way, shape, or form. And just think if they had Gronk still. Like they had Gronk, it would definitely be no contest. But even without him, you got freaking Martell Bennett. So like the Patriots are still good. And I, I still don't think it's going to be a blowout. I, I would say they will win by at least a touchdown. I'm not going to say 14. I would say at least a touchdown. I'm going to go 14 still. <clears throat> All right. Uh, kind of touch on Ace. What did you call? What did you call Tom Brady? A baby back bitch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he stole that from you but, with your with you talk about uh marriage. <laughs> yeah, I know, but uh I ain't still that. I didn't nobody. I didn't call Miritich that. Uh I, I called him something, but I don't think I called him that. It don't matter. Miritich. I call him no, I call him Mira bitch. Um but <laughs> yeah, but um and Siggy called him the GOAT. Um I won't go that far. I still say Joe Montana is the greatest quarterback ever. That's just my personal mm. opinion. Um, but I will say this. Nobody has done more with less than Tom Brady has. I mean, you think of all yep, the players that true. rotates in and out, you know, the lineup. I mean, his best target isn't hasn't even played in weeks, and he still find a way. And even defensively, man, they're not the greatest defensive team, but they always find a way to, you know, come with some scheme to, you know, you might get them once or twice, but you're not going to do anything major to – you know to really knock them off lately and the only couple times that what they lost what twice in the super bowl and both times was the uh the eli right Giant. and it wasn't so much what what the giants offense did to them it was more so what the Giants defense did to them that front four that the giants defense had they just they just messed up you know tom brady's timing so that's the reason why they lost and um also, like and both I'm times not, they needed a miracle drive too, right. if you think about it. Yeah, so it was always they were close games, so it was nothing like you know like a a real like defining you know a defining defeat that they took in the Super Bowl. So I mean they they always find ways to win. I'm not a New England Patriots fan by no stretch, but I am a fan of Tom Brady and what he does. And for somebody to say he's a system quarterback, I'm like, come on, fam, you still got to go out there and make shit happen. Regardless of oh yeah, system. he makes. Yeah, you yeah, still gotta go. Out there. Yeah, you still gotta go out there and make it happen. So, I don't think that uh, Atlanta has a, has a, you know that much of a chance of beating them. I don't. I don't. I want to say it's not gonna be even close, but I mean Atlanta has proved me wrong before. So I'll just say that Patriots gonna win this this game. As much as we all hate and get tired of seeing the Patriots win, you know, you just get tired of seeing it and. I think it's going to be interesting to see if that happens, how how uncomfortable that's going to look with Goodell up there handing him that trophy. Everybody wants to see that because nobody – I think people hate Roger to Goodell more than they hate the Patriots. So they wanna, they're going to want to see him have to go up there and swallow his pride and hand that trophy over to them, to, you know, Robert Kraft and the Patriots and Belichick and all of them and see that look on his face. Get the memes ready. So <laughs> I, I feel like the Patriots is going to win, but, I mean – never know man we, we said this before and the team that you least expected to win end up you know can, can win the game but i don't think atlanta has that big of a shot i think the stage is going to be a little too much for him right now true matty ice will show up eventually the real matty, matty ice. ice mighty ice no <laughs> the, 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 the matty ice i got another point i got another point i want to make we throw like greatest and all this other stuff we got to think about it man in this age of uh nfl football the defenses are not nearly as good as they used to be. Yeah, but you got to remember, too, this is a free agent, a free well. agent era. It's not the dynasty era. I mean, yeah, I, don't yeah. get me wrong. You know, just think about it like this. If there was free agency and all these players can get paid, you don't think Jerry Rice would have taken an offer from Jerry Jones at that time for the biggest contract ever and maybe not even have, you know. And to have Troy Aikman as your quarterback instead of uh, Joe Montana? Hell I mean, the, the, no. It's, it's, there there could have been so many things that could have happened in that era if there was free agency. Bro, that, that's the reason why. I'm a wide receiver. The, I'm going with Joe Go. That's all I'm saying. That's why I still think Tom Brady. That's why I think Tom Brady has finally proven himself to be the greatest. Not only because he's doing it now, even at this age of 40, whatever he is now. He's but um, also, he's been doing it in the free agent era, which is a lot tougher than – I mean, you got to remember, all these players that become really, really good just leave for more money in the end. They always do, it seems. And – 
the Patriots never had that big name guy except for Moss on a trade. I mean, aside from everybody else, it was all draft and they're all brought up. I mean, who would have thought Troy Brown would be anything good? Who would have thought, um, Ronnie, who would have thought all these guys that everybody threw away too, like Corey Dillon and everybody, would just become good? I mean, that Patriots team just breeds, makes you better. The only person that really failed was Chad Johnson, you know, Ocho Cinco. That's the only Watch one I got the boy on the ball. You're not working with the system, yeah. and you yeah, had you, to go. Yeah, you can't work within <laughs> their system, man. You out of there. That's I think he was too play. comfortable in Cincinnati. He really relied on Palmer just throwing it to him. He didn't. Of course. He, he could tell of Ocho course. Cinco didn't study nothing. <laughs> I don't know, man. That it was just that 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 San Francisco 49ers, yo. It, but I mean, but that was dying. I mean, they were all they got all drafted, and they. I mean, that was like I said, even with the even with the Cowboys too. Same thing. That was on the tail end. They were just. I mean, it was just a perfect situation for them to become great because they were all together, and they there was no way they can go. There was no way mean, they can go. I so. could kind of see what you're saying because maybe if he did go to Dallas and make all that money, maybe he wouldn't be subjecting himself to making pop ass chicken commercials and shit like that. Man, so. <laughs> Freaking cone, <laughs> cooning way. out, cooning and out. Cooning so, and out. So, who knows? Man, you, <laughs> you, might, you lost might, your status. Right, you might be on to something there, Siggy. So you might be on to something. <laughs> Yeah. We can right. talk about that on the next right. show. That's, a, that's another, 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 that's another topic for another day. All right, we're going to switch gears away from the Super Bowl right now. Let's talk about this Charles Barkley versus LeBron James deal, man. Now, yeah, I've been wanting to talk about this for a while. It's coming, going. We didn't it's get getting... a chance to talk. We actually meant to do this a couple of days ago, but scheduling conflicts kind of prevented us from doing it. Um, Charles Barkley versus LeBron James. In a nutshell, Barkley went on record saying that, you know, he's he's whining and stuff like that. You got a championship team. You just won an NBA title. How many more players do you want? Does he want to play with all the good players? Or does he not want to compete? I think that line right there, everything else he was cool with, but saying does he not want to compete touched a nerve. And if you are a player, if you are a competitor in any field, trust me, I know this, for someone to question – your, you know, competitiveness, or it's basically questioning your heart. And I can see why LeBron kind of got pissed about it. But my thing is, LeBron's response was all personal. It was nothing he said, nothing that he said uh, about, you know, Charles Barkley's play, him not winning a championship, him not being in shape in order to do that, and all this other stuff. All the stuff that he said was personal. <clears throat> Excuse me. He went on, you know, he went on record by talking about, you know, having unpaid gambling debts in uh, Vegas, and you yep. know him, you know, spitting on a kid, him making commercials saying he's not a role model, him getting in the fights and bars and stuff like that. All the stuff that he said was personal. And did LeBron go too far? I actually got a video up on this on YouTube too, so y'all make sure y'all go check that out after y'all finish up in here, <laughs> <laughs> going more in depth about it. You know, shameless plug. I don't give a fuck. My strength. But um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> but yeah, so you know everything LeBron did is said he ta- he attacked the man personal and me personally I'll let everybody else go I'll just say this real quickly because I talked about this before I feel like LeBron was wrong for ta- attacking him personal he wasn't wrong for going at him he was just wrong for attacking him personally and, and Barkley actually responded to it said that a lot of this shit is true. He like, and he went yep. on record saying, like, I never attack players personally. I talk about your play, and I talk about the stuff that you're doing if you're not doing something well. So we'll start with JG. Jay. Oh, yeah. What's your, what's your thoughts on this, fam? All right, so uh, the answer to your question is, yes, I do feel like LeBron uh, went too far because when you're talking about personal stuff, it's kind of like <laughs> it's kinda like we see, like, uh, with YouTube beefs and stuff. Like, we're talking about video games, but all of a sudden it gets personal. It's kind of the same situation here um but at the same time i felt like this was lebron's breaking point uh lebron has pretty much stayed quiet about any analyst it doesn't uh, any analyst any network saying anything about him uh you can't really say anything bad about lebron like lebron has pretty much stayed uh stay neutral about everything or like you may hear like a couple of things here and there about the calves uh mostly about um you know how he's kind of wanting to assume the role of a coach and a gm at the same time uh but still really nothing has come out in the media about anything bad that he said or done until now um again that was wrong but i just felt like this was an instant reaction he was like all right you know what well, again, when you're talking about me competing, forget about anything else that you're talking about. But when you mention that, that, that you know, you went too far now, Charles Barkley. But what I want to point out is um, <laughs> is when they talked about it again and uh, and Shaq got into it because Shaq said. I saw that shit. <laughs> Shaq said. 
<laughs> I like, like, like Charles. I like Charles' response with the fighting thing. Yeah, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, bro. That shit was perfect, so, bro. So that Shaq, shit was perfect. Yeah, yeah, he it. So Shaq was like, uh, it's actually, I would have got mad too, um, hearing that from you. He said, I would have punched you in your face. <laughs> yeah. And Charles, and Charles Barkley first said, he said, first of all, you can't first, fight. First of all, he said, you're not a good fighter. You're not a good fighter. Then he just went right into what he said. Right, right. First of all, you're not a good fighter. And then, he went, right <laughs> the like, right, right, first of all, you're not a good fighter. <laughs> and then, um, and then they played a clip. They actually played a clip of Shaq and Charles Barkley fighting, and Shaq did punch him, and it was funny. <laughs> I didn't even remember that. <laughs> yeah, bro. But that was hilarious. But Shaq was pretty much on LeBron's side. He was like, "Look, I wouldn't suck that either." He's like, "You said it about me. I would have punched in your face." So, I, I, I mean, again, you see somebody else who's, who's kind of you know feels the same way. And at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, Charles Barkley, you didn't win any championships. So if you you want to talk about competing, um, you didn't compete hard enough, obviously, if you didn't win anything out of it. At least LeBron did win something. Um, but going to the point yeah, of I mean, why Charles could easily come back and say, hey, I didn't leave. I didn't chase for my championship. I mean, yeah, everybody, yeah, everybody yeah, said that. Everybody yeah. can say that. But, yeah, you know, going to that of, you know, having people around him again i feel like lebron is just frustrated because they don't have a backup point guard anymore um i don't think that lebron necessarily wants to play with all of the big players he just wants someone to help Kyrie Irving out. And last year they had that with Della Vadova. I feel like they should have never gave Della Vadova away. He, he should, they but, definitely not. But they couldn't afford to pay him because they overpaid. But they should have. They overpaid. Yeah, they should have. Everybody so else. Yeah. Like yep. Yep. Like and yep. and yep. Tristan Thompson. Yeah. Who, so they, who, they who were spending their money. Who co signed for all these signings? Because you know, it was Cleveland, LeBron. Cleveland, was it was LeBron. LeBron. Exactly. It was LeBron. Because Cleveland was going to let Shumper walk. Cleveland was gonna yep. let either Shumper or uh, Smith and walk. And J.R. Smith. Of, yeah, he there, was yeah, gonna yeah, let yeah. one or two of them b- both walk. Same thing with Tristan Thompson. And it's like, cause I'm like, why would you pay Tristan Thompson all his money? You got Kevin Love playing the same position. So, exactly. Yeah, that, like he said, wants I to keep everybody. Video. That's why I'm just not saying anything. Else. Yeah, it's like I I understand that I understand, but at the end of the day, you still need a backup at that position. So, uh, you know, they did mess up with all of the moves that they but ended Della, up making. The reason why Adela Vadova left was because they didn't match uh, Milwaukee's offer. Because, you know, he was a restricted free agent. They offered yeah. him, I don't know how much exactly, because I'm, I'm not checking for Adela Vadova or whatever. But however it was, they, they offered him. Cleveland could have matched it, and he could have been he could have just had to stay with, you know, stay with the team. He didn't really speak up for Della Vadova like he did. He did it. Else. No, so not at all. He like, spoke up. Yeah. He spoke up for Jefferson. I'm like, I'm like, really, man? I'm like, that's. I mean, that's who. That series when they played the Bulls and beat the Bulls and in, in, in that series where the Bulls should have won. You know what I mean? Because they was up in the in the third and at the end of the third quarter and they could have went up three games to one on them. And LeBron hit that game winning shot. That right there, Della Vadova was out playing Rose that whole series. That whole series, so that should have showed you, man. Like, Delhi was an X like, factor, dog. I'm, I'm sorry, but even was, though they did, yeah, they did lose was. in uh, in 2015, yo, Della Vadova was kind of locking up Curry. So yeah, he was like, like, he was like I'm saying, like Della, on him. yeah, Della Vadova is a good defensive presence. So I felt like I, I was surprised myself when they actually let him go. Um, and then they ended up getting Corver, you know, because J.R. Smith was hurt. But I felt like y'all should have just let Shumper play that position because Shumper is now, you know, he's kind of emerging again. But uh, Corver doesn't work with that system either. So I felt like that was another dumb trade. But I, again, I felt like they kind of got nervous because they didn't know when Jr. was going to be back. But right. that wasn't the position that y'all needed. Y'all need a point guard, and they're all point guards on the block. Like uh, rumors saying that Darren, uh, Darren Williams, if he gets healthy, he might come over. But like y'all still need that position at the end of the day. So um, again, going back to what you're saying, like LeBron was out of pocket for what he said but it was just a breaking point i just felt like he just wanted to say something at that point because charles definitely touched a nerve with that for sure all right um before i before i swing this over to ace i, I just want to say this real quick i didn't mention this um you all remember a few like a while back this was probably like 10 years ago or what however long ago it was when um when when barkley criticized kobe bryant when they blew that 3-1 series lead against phoenix and they said you know kobe only took like six shots or some shit like that and then he called kobe selfish because you know he was he was he basically was trying to prove a point because people saying yo he's shooting too much and all that so he was like Kobe was like yo fuck I'm not gonna take shots then let's see how this works and he called him selfish and you know Kobe got pissed about that Kobe reached out to him by text message Kobe ended up going on the show after that series and you know he went on the show and then they talked about it right then and there it didn't get personal with Kobe Kobe didn't even really say anything Kobe's just like you know what whatever I'm gonna holler at this dude myself. 
So yeah, you know, I said that to say this, man. People are cut from different cloth. That's why I mess with Kobe because Kobe has the mentality of some grown man shit. LeBron is so used to being what? pampered. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Stop, JG. Stop. Do we not want to talk about how you snitching no shack though about some personal shit? We not talking about after. That's the personal stuff. We talking about. But but is it still? But did he not do the same thing? We're not talking about practice. We're not talking about that, Kobe. I'm talking. I didn't really start liking Kobe Bryant until after Shaq left. You know what I mean? Because Kobe when had Kobe to grow up. Kobe had to grow up mentally. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking man, about. Man, I like Kobe player. with the fro, bro. No, that Kobe was a bitch. You, know what <laughs> man? you see what Chris oh, Childs? You man. see what Chris Childs did to him? I like. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, I like man, Kobe. The one two listen piece. To listen to me. You see how, how he would? You know he would just tell certain players like, "Yo, don't talk to me right now, man. Get your game right before you come over here joking and bullshit." You know he had that mentality like, "Look, look I want to win at all costs." Kobe was the ultimate competitor. After Jordan left, so that's what I, that's what I mean by that. Like Kobe mindset was on some grown man shit. He didn't go all personal on on Charles Barkley. Why? Because he learned from his mistakes with what he did with Shaq. You know what I mean? So okay, but yeah. LeBron didn't have any mistakes though. Yeah, like we're he does talking it all about the time. LeBron does it all of the time. We're talking Remember, about one let's instance. Talk about, no, let's talk about when they lost to um to Dallas in the finals. And the reporter said, "Oh, I, how do you feel about people like actually happy that you all up? Well, I still live my life. They got to go back to their lives, and they yeah, gotta, uh, you know what I'm saying? That's a bitch move, bro. That's a <laughs> bitch move. That's what the shit I'm talking about. When LeBron gets attacked, either somebody has to come to the defense for him, or he hides up and he frogs up and he gets personal. And he has to, you know, he say a lot of shit. Oh, it's a new sheriff in town. Nigga, stop. Come on, man." I don't want to hear that shit, bro. Not one, not two, yeah, not all that, three, all that not shit four. LeBron, LeBron does to himself, yo. A lot of that shit he does <laughs> is self-inflicted. I'll never defend Kobe Bryant to because I'm not, you know, a, a Kobe stan like some people are out here. But I'm not a LeBron head either. You know what I mean? Both of them have made mistakes, but I feel like from a mental standpoint, I would definitely pick Kobe over LeBron for handling the situation because they were both similar situations. Barkley called that man selfish. Barkley told LeBron he was whining, which in a sense he was because he went to the media with it. You get what I'm saying? He called, he criticized Kobe for his play. He criticized LeBron for the shit that he said. LeBron was out there turning the ball over. He wasn't playing great either, but it's kind of like he threw his teammates under the bus. Kobe went on the set and they squashed it there. LeBron went to the media, screw Charles Barkley. Oh, da, da, da. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. You know yeah. what I mean? That's what I'm saying, man. So, Maybe he didn't just want to talk to him. He was bitch made. I don't Singing. know. Look, I mean, Ace, look. Ace it's on you, look. bro. Bro, all I'm going to say is this about the whole, like, LeBron James, uh, Charles Barkley thing. Like, I don't think that anything that Charles Barkley said necessarily was wrong. I just think that he, he, he clearly touched the nerve with LeBron. And do I think that LeBron handled it properly? No, I don't. If he would have said something that had was relevant to what um, to what Charles Barkley was said, instead of uh, attacking his character and his personal life and all of his mistakes that he did, then I'd be like, okay, cool, LeBron headed himself. But he didn't. He actually made himself look worse by saying pers- personal stuff about Charles Barkley. And I think it was good that Charles Barkley was like, look, you're right. Like what you said and everything like that. I, I mean, I have to admit, I, I did that. But my 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 in my mind, no, no, my... You, you, you're leaving out the good parts. He was funnier. He goes, "You forgot that I lost to uh, somebody in Jeopardy and right. <laughs> or this." Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I just, I just, I'm just curious. I just, I mean, I understand that LeBron was pissed and everything like that. And, I, and this is going to the point of what um, uh, Flock was saying. Like at the end of the day, yeah, a lot of shit that Kobe did, especially much when he was younger. But some bitch shit, of course, absolutely. But the mentality that Kobe developed over towards the end of his career and and made him to the player in person he is now, I just feel that he wouldn't if he had that mentality, he would have went and go talk to Charles Barkley. He wouldn't have had to go to the media or anything like that, and he could have just went to go talk to him. But you know what I would say? I would have said if I was Barkley after that shit, I'd have been like, "Look at you, emotional." That's all I was Great. <laughs> That's what it was. He was in his feelings. You could tell he was triggered. That's exactly what it was. LeBron was triggered and, and he felt some type of way. And so he decided to attack his uh Charles Barkley's character. Like he could he could have easily been like, Well, you ain't got no rings or anything along those lines, but he didn't. So whatever. Alright, look, let me go ahead and go now. 
Charles Barkley was 100% correct. And the reason why, forget touching nerves and all that, that LeBron felt that way is because he was absolutely right and he yep. knew it. Because yeah. Skip Bayless talks trash all the time. He even makes more outrageous, outlandish, you know, says about LeBron than, you know, than Charles ever has. But when you hear the truth 100%, if it is the whole confidence thing or if it's the you know regardless of what it was that Shaq thought it was that means he was right for LeBron to be that mad period so Charles was right in the end and LeBron knows that he was right so then he said it was an emotional response I saw that on the chat that's exactly what it was he was triggered he knew that he, Charles was 100% right so he had to deflect he had to get people away from that because that was his weakness in the end that he touched the nerve forget touching the nerve he was net, you know net on the what's it called a uh, dead no whatever head on the coffin nail on the coffin whatever he was dead on right the oh, yeah. um, absolutely the team that he has lebron was all him he's the one that decided to let Mo moscow go or delhi go because i don't know he didn't want them he was more friends i guess with tristan thompson jr smith uh jefferson and um what's his face chump if you would have let them go would you really have lost anything if you would have kept moscow and delhi i mean so in the end the team that he has and ultimately the team that he has is because of the big three these contracts are sucking up the team his contract he has the biggest one right now right what is he making two years 100 million was it i mean so he's i mean he's half the payroll himself so he can't sit there and say that they're not trying their hardest because in the end they have no wiggle room they have you the have highest, what you they have the highest uh fucking uh salary highest paid yeah. salary of any team in the league and they end the luxury tax too of course and this is yep. cleveland we're talking about that's not even a major city right exactly, exactly. major city you mean right major major village <laughs> but in the end lebron can't complain because he still has a big three he what he's really whining about is that he's playing a lot but the thing is the reason why the team is top heavy is because they have three superstars. When you look at any of the team, let's look at the, the Thunder, for instance. They just lost a rant. Westbrook would kill to have a, a Kyrie Irving with him or a Kevin Love with him or a LeBron with him. He only has himself. Oladipo is his big two. <laughs> I mean, exactly. come on. Uh, Carmelo is a good example. He never got a big three. What we have is a shadow of former players that to try to make a big three, but there's not. it's not a big three. Kyrie is regarding one of the top, what, top three point guards? Can we all agree on that with Kyrie yes. right now? Top yep. three, right? Love, all right, he's might, he might not be, you know, the top, I'd say maybe top he's an six. He run, he, he's getting 20 and 10, so I don't know why yeah, he's keep on cutting that dude, selling that dude short. He averages 20 and 10. I mean, as far as today's concerned, power forward position, yeah, he's still up there, no, no doubt. And LeBron, obviously, is the best player on the planet. Period. There's no other small forward or shooting guard or point or whatever he wants to play better than him right now. Period. So he has a top three point guard, the number one player in the world, and then a top six power forward, and he's still complaining in the end. He can't do that. You can't have a big three in your bench, LeBron. You can't do it. He's going to have to suck it up and just play with that team. He won with that team last year, so he can't complain about yeah, that either. Exactly. So. Now, he, had hey, an excuse. Hey. he had an excuse in the finals the year before that, and that to me is still probably the best single performance ever in the NBA Finals, even though they lost to Golden State. That shit that he did and that was incredible. And they yep. lost, and he still almost, they still almost, you know, they still almost took it to seven games. So I just, I feel like this dude gets, you know, he, he gets everything. He gets, the, he got the keys to the kingdom in the NBA, and it's like, damn, man, how much more do you need? Like, you, you got it. Like this team is a is is a reflection of what you said you wanted. He like oh, and I they, think they want them to spend unconditionally, and they've done just that for him. If you are know, so somebody just said that all he wants is a backup ball handler, but I mean, whenever the Kyle Korver trade went through, everybody in social media thought, oh, it's not fair. Oh, now they're gonna have the super team. You can't. I mean, who are you gonna get? Darren Williams. That's gonna make it even more. You know, <laughs> look like like they're just they're just Back pandering for yeah. for nothing in the end. You're adding pieces that you don't were, need. Were, in the were team. they working out players like Kirk Heinrich, uh, Lance Stevenson, um, who else? And uh, Jordan Farmer. Yep. Oh my God, and, Jordan Farmer. Yeah, yeah. Jordan, yeah. Jordan <laughs> Farmer of all people. It was somebody else too. I can't think. Uh, shit, I can't think of who it is. But yeah, it was a few guys that they were working out with the team, 
Um, I know hey, you know who should have got, got Yogi. Nate should have got Yogi and Mario Chalmers. That's yeah, that's Mario a, Chalmers. Yeah, yep, former yep. player that played with him. And um, I know Nate Robinson trying to come back in the league, but I don't think that's a good fit for them because he's not like a you know a distributor. Nate Robinson is like instant offense. He's offense. a scorer. Yeah, yeah he's scorer. like he's like like how he's just a more explosive version of how Isaiah Thomas is now. He just can't shoot as good as Isaiah. So Rondo too. What are you talking about? Rondo played for the Bulls, nigga. Shut up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> talking about who they might trade for Rondo. Oh, no, I heard not, Rondo, oh, Rondo and Darren Williams are the two oh, hot nah. ones. No, no, they ain't. They ain't trade. They, I mean, Rondo got two years on that deal. That's gonna be too hard for him. Rondo waiting for them to buy him out so he can go sign with whoever he wants. They can't. They don't. They don't have enough. They don't have enough. Um, you know, either pieces or they be giving up shit and stuff. I don't. I don't see the Bulls making that deal. With well, one of the big, the biggest thing about these names that we just threw out there too is they have to sign them on a ten-day contract because that's all they can afford, right? I mean, <laughs> their cap yeah, situation. They, yeah, their cap situation is too bad, man. That's what I said yeah. they put them, they dug themselves in that hole, and yep. they just got to get themselves out of it, man. That's 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 all it is. They got to get themselves out of it. So if you were saying, uh, my bad, bro, if you was just saying to make a trade for him, I thought you were saying he was a free agent. I thought I was like, damn, dude, you ain't paying attention to the league. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, if that's what you was trying to say. Um, let's move on. We'll go into some of these NBA, uh, these NBA trade rumors. Of course, the number one person whose name's been been mentioned nonstop, nonstop. My boy, your boy, Carmelo Anthony. So since that's your boy, Siggy, you can you can start off talking about how do you feel and these possible landing spots, which included. Um, I also got Cleveland. a video up on that too, talking about the whole Carmelo drama, man. If y'all want to go check that out on YouTube, you know what I'm saying? All right, so this, all right, so the Carmelo to the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers, I actually think that's what sparked LeBron's anger. I think, I think, yeah, the, it did. I think the, um, I think that the Cavaliers rejected the trade for Kevin Love, mm-hmm. and they didn't run it by LeBron. And I got a feeling that's what started. I, don't, I, I think the timeline shows that that's probably what happened. And but the Cavaliers are probably like, why are we trading for a power, you know, for somebody that's playing your position in the end, you know. Yeah, and now and you're also, starting and to hit. also four, what four years older, four or five years yeah. older. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense because I know the money matches and stuff like that, but it doesn't make sense for both teams in the end because even if we get love, you know, the Knicks, what, Porzingis is that playing that position, so why would you want somebody like that, right? So then, you know, all the drama happened, obviously. And now the latest rumor is that Melo might still get traded to the Cavs, but without love. And I don't see how that's possible because in order in the NBA, in order for these trades to go through, you have to make the money make sense. Who are you trading? Are we going to really take Shumpert, J.R. Smith, um, Tristan Thompson, Char- you know, Fry- Channing Fry? Are we taking all these players just for just for Melo? I mean, that it, it doesn't even make sense for the Cavs at the end because then what do they have? You talk about no bench. <laughs> you're gonna have nobody playing leader, behind yeah. them i just don't get why i just don't get why you know they're even talking to each other at this point i know that Melo and and lebron are friends but there 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 comes a business decision that on both sides that they just you gotta realize looking at each other like you know what this makes no sense now the clippers part i was more angry about hearing that you know rumor because we weren't getting blake griffin i want a player at least decent. I'm not taking no Austin Rivers or a uh, or Felton again <laughs> for Melo. It's just not gonna happen. So Melo's gonna have to die in Nick at this point because I can't see myself paying all this money for a somewhat star. You know, he might not be the same star as he used to be, but I can't imagine getting trash in return. I'm not. I don't want to be like the Nuggets. So <laughs> I oh, want to. I want to get a decent piece that you can build around, at least an up and coming rising star. So if you, if we talk to Philadelphia, I'm more than happy to listen to all them pieces there because they got pieces that I can see them building around in the end, whether it's Noel Embiid or, or, you know, Simmons, any of them I'll take. You said that they, makes got, more sense you said they got trash in return for Carmelo? Who, Denver? Yeah. Actually, they got some good, they, they, I mean, the Knicks, were at fault for what they did and I blame them for this whole Harley because Carmelo could have just signed with them in the offseason and they still had enough cap space to sign them. They gave away like Gallinari, yeah, that's Wilson true. Chandler, Mozgov, and some picks to get that dude. So yeah, they, no, they gave, they up, the, they gave they up the moon. Get, yeah, they gave up the farm to get Carmelo there when they could have had all those players with him coming over there if he would have just rolled out that, that season. That's what that's where the Knicks went wrong. 
And then the second thing they went wrong by doing was by actually re-signing them. Because he said, man, yo, I need a no trade and all this other. And that's why they're dealing with what the mess they're dealing with now. Because now they can't that's unload true. them unless he approves it. And the only teams yep. he's going to he's gonna approve going to is the Clippers or the Cavaliers. Yep. None of those teams work. Yeah. And I mean, and, 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 and it's more Not likely, it's more likely to, in more likelihood, more likely to happen with LA than, than Cleveland because Cleveland's not going to be stupid and give up all that. If if it's just for Kevin Love, Cavaliers still like, nah, we good, man. Because this dude is a ball stopper. You know what I mean? He can't defend. His body's broken down. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. So I wouldn't make that move either if I was Cleveland. I, I stated that the Celtics would have been the best move because the Celtics had picks and a couple of young players. They could have, you know, they could have gave up Amir Johnson and maybe Marcus Smart or um or what's the dude name with the with the dreads? Uh, Crowder. Yeah, Jay Crowder. You know what I mean? And the salaries probably would have matched. And then they probably could have gave them like that that New Jersey pick that they have because they getting that pick from the Nets this season. So I, I, Celtics, hey, you know what? the Celtics will end up having the number two seed in the East, and then at the end of the year, they're going to end up having a, at least a top four pick in the draft. So but there's rumors, yeah. though. There's rumors, Flock, that your Bulls might trade Butler to the no, uh, Celtics mm-hmm. for Crowder. I heard about it. Yeah. So I don't think I shut that, down too, but they're that, still trying that, to build that, around Butler. So yeah, I don't that, know about that, that. That I mean, so that would be ideal. But the Celtics don't want to deal with Melo either. They like, yo, this dude gonna come over here and mess up our chemistry, mess up our flow, and all of that. So, so right now, as just so I said, the most, the most, um, the most intriguing, you know, the most possible, likely move is that 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 Clippers move. And I don't know if that's gonna happen either. Like you said, they probably just stuck with this dude. He's going to die. I think we're stuck York. with him. Cause they, I mean, Melo had a chance to come to Chicago, but, you know, he didn't want to take less money. He wanted to get paid. He wanted to cash out. That's the difference. Like, when you try to put him in that conversation with LeBron and D-Wade and all them, you can't. Because the, look what LeBron did. Look what Wade did. They sacrificed money in order to bring each other there and get guys around them so they can win. Melo's not willing to do that. He wants to cash out. You know, he wants to cash out and then say, yo, my heart, New York. I want to stay in New York. You know, I'm, 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 I'm invested in New York and all this. And Phil Jackson, like, man, why don't you just go that away, motherfucker? Like, go that away. You know yeah, I mean? that way. Yeah, he, that's what Phil is doing. So, I don't know, man. I mean, I just I just had to go in on that one. My bad. Y- y- y'all can finish. Hey, well, um, I mean, hey, well, okay. you know that he has a relationship hey, with the Lakers. What Can he convince Melo to go to L.A.? As far as not the not the Clippers, but the the Lakers, uh, the LA be stupid enough. I mean, to pay too. you mean the I mean that I mean I can see the Lakers making that move, but what does the Lakers have to give in return? Yeah, besides, I don't know that either. Unless besides, they give up, the guy. They give up. Right, what they gonna give up? Uh, Russell would be the only name George, that I would. George, I could, uh, Randall, Larson, actually, uh, Randall for maybe, Randall, but if they want a center, yeah. But I wouldn't. I I mean, if I'm mellow, I want Randall there. Yeah. I want Randall there. I mean, Carmelo, let's face it, Carmelo's body is breaking down. He can't chase around a Kevin Durant or a Kawhi Leonard and stuff like that. So you got to make him like a stretch four. So, I mean, you, you can't have him out here chasing these small fours. He's going to get lit up, especially in the West. He's going to get yeah, he's torched. stuck. I'm telling you, he's stuck. Yeah. Go ahead, Ace. I mean, I don't really have you. I mean, you guys pretty much hit the nail on the hammer. Like, I mean, there's not really much else to say. I mean, do it would it be interesting to see Melo in L.A.? It's not going to happen. It won't, but LA will be LA will give all their damn money for it. But we don't really have much to offer. We don't. Hey, somebody said he need to stay. He need to go to the Nets if he want to stay in New York. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. He would stay yeah. in New York. Hey, you know what? I'll take. I'll take. Um. I'll take. Brooke, I'll take. I need you on Brook Lopez. Yeah. You want <laughs> Man, these trade rumors are annoying. Um, and it's mostly annoying just due to the fact that. Carmelo only wants to go to specific teams and none of those teams work. That's what really makes me upset. Like it, it, there could be other teams like like uh you mentioned Flock and when you mentioned it it does make perfect sense for him to go to the Celtics. I mean it's not far from New York, so I feel like that would be a better situation. Like Melo needs to expand the teams that he's willing to go to cuz those teams don't work for him at all, especially what the possibilities could be. Like uh, I feel like it's a lose-lose either way. Like you're trading positions away and it still doesn't make anything better. Porzingis came out and said, I still want to play with Melo. He said, I still have things to learn from him. So he, he said, I want to play with Melo for a long time. Porzingis is still developing. He's had a little bit of uh, of injuries this year, um, and, and he's been sick as well. But 
Porzingis is still, he, I feel like he's going to develop into uh, definitely a top 10 uh, power forward if he keeps going. Because that man, he is a unicorn for sure. But just it's just the teams that Melo wants to go to that, that just make it pisses me off. Like none of those teams work at no all. No Knicks though. fan wants to hear us helping the Celtics either, though. So I, I can't even say yeah, that. Yeah, that, that is true. That is true. So Melo needs to, again, expand who uh, he think, wants to go think, to. Phil wants Phil to Jackson drop him off. He don't give a no, fuck. He don't care. No, no. Phil Jackson don't care. He's not working with the offense that he wants to run. Uh, Melo doesn't work with any offense, period, any offensive scheme. Um, if it doesn't involve him holding on to the ball and shooting whenever he wants to with the jab steps. Um, so it, it just uh, – I feel like he's just going to stay in New York unless he actually wants to go to some other teams besides those two. Don't go to those teams. Why do you, Why are the Cavs – like, what do the Cavs in New York even have to talk about? It says that they're still talking. What are y'all talking about? Nothing works. Nothing yeah, works nothing, at all. Nothing really does work. And wow. even if, and especially the the situation where they're saying now we're okay, let's try to make the, the trade without love. I mean, what that doesn't even make sense. No. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> so Cleveland, just dead there. Yeah, dead there shit, yo. Cleveland dead needs dead. a backup point guard and they need a center. A true center. Don't, we don't need another small forward. LeBron has that position to down pack. All right, so let's talk, let's talk about then the Darren Williams to Cavs. We, we touched up on it in the last segment. Do you think what makes sense on that one? What, what what can the Mavs get in return? I mean, from a, <laughs> right from a salary standpoint, I nobody, mean, <clears throat> nobody. If they just doing a salary dump, but then again, who it'll have Cleveland, to be Tristan who Thompson. Does, who, does Cleveland, who does Cleveland have? They're not giving them up. And, and, you know that's that's equal trade value for like. You think they're gonna trade Tristan Thompson? So I think that would be the Williams only name that can make it make sense. For a backup, then, for a backup point guard, they don't need guy. another big man. Best rebounder for a backup. Yeah, I know you don't do that. But um, but Fry does. Fry has been pretty good whenever he's in there though. Shannon Fry's been decent, nah. but I said don't I said don't think that makes sense either for real. And then Darren Williams has also been off of, uh he's been in injury trouble too. So it's like, damn, Darren, you got to show us as well that you're fine, that you can actually be a decent backup point guard. So he I wanted, don't I don't wanted, know, man. He wanted Felton bad. That's what he wanted. That's what LeBron wanted over there, Raymond Felton. But my thing yep, is, man, when you when you Clippers. co-sign when you co-sign for all these players and get all this big money. You ain't got you lead the organization with little to no wiggle room to make any you know any of those knickknack deals because like uh Shaq says it's not the star players that win those championship for it's the others you know what I mean it's the it's the other guys it's not gonna be LeBron that win it all the time it's not gonna be Kyrie that win it all the time it's gonna have to be a J.R. Smith that comes out and play good defense on 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 Clay Thompson or somebody else a uh, Della Vadova that comes out and, and locks down Curry and. Even when Kevin Love was out there tiptoeing, trying to stay in front of Steph Curry a couple times, he did a good ass job. You know what I mean? I mean, granted, he didn't do shit in the finals. I was like, yeah, but if I, he I was on my though, team after we got them rings, I'd have looked at it there like you still ain't. Do I, I think though, I get what Shaq was saying in that part, but a lot of these names that that he was throwing out became that. You know what I mean? It's not like they knew, like you know, you know that who uh, Kyle Korver is, or you know some of these players now. You you know these like Felton. You know who right. he is now. But, but and you want them on your team, but the Bulls they didn't know Ku Coach was going to become like that whenever he was playing with them. You know he just became it. So in the end, it's easy to look back and be like, oh, you had Kerr and you had Ku Coach. Nobody wanted them in the draft, so they got them. You know what I mean? It's right. not like it's it's not like they went out and got them. They just yeah, happened dude, to be there. It's it just like we were talking about when it uh, came to Brady um, and how he makes players look good. Yeah, like exactly. you don't you don't expect any of these players to be awesome, but they end up being those role players. They develop into those role players, exactly. and it is uh, you know it's, it's coaching definitely, but it is because of who you have on your team. Like you had freaking Jordan and Pippen, and if you see them playing well, it's going to motivate you to play uh, better as well. So that's well, how they also they won last year with Jr. Smith and and Shumper. Now how yep. come all of a sudden they're not good enough? You know now all of a sudden, oh we need somebody to be better than them. I mean they wanted these these were the same guys that you would be thinking of. Oh look you need a Shumper at the end to actually play and get 20 points one game against the Warriors, etc. You need I mean that's something that happened and now all of a sudden you're throwing that away. I mean that's the reason why I don't think it makes sense from LeBron yeah. to say it. Like Corver again was a desperation pick. It didn't make any sense at all. They literally just did that because J.R. Smith was. Uh, was I think hurt. they were just hoping that he's going to catch, you know, lightning in a bottle. That he'll be, you know, the three point, you know, guy that he's going to come in there and just. He nah. they thought he was going to be Mike Miller, pretty much. Corver Corver works well off of screens. Corver is a great shooter. You can't deny that. But he works better off of screens. That's what they did all the time with the Atlanta off uh, with the Atlanta offensive schemes. That doesn't work. They don't play the same offense in uh, in Cleveland. So. He doesn't really work. He, he gets a lot of open like looks. But... Either. He was falling apart. He's just in the – he his career is just going down the toilet, I think. Yeah, like Cavs drive and kick. Like, that's that's their that's their niche. But 
Like, I don't know if Kyle Corver isn't, he isn't as good of a, of a catch and shoot person more than, you know, getting off of screens. I don't know. He's and on Corver is kind of he's streaky. He's definitely streaky, but very, again, very it didn't make streaky. any sense. It only worked in Atlanta because he was able to get all the looks because he was the only person or person they had in that spot. And they stressed the floor. I mean, you had freaking Paul Millsap and Al Horford, and both of them can shoot threes too. So, like, did everybody was out there? It's like, what are you what are you going to do? Pick your poison. I don't know. It's it's, it's weird, but I I feel like you know somebody said in the chat too. They they really just need to get a free agent. I don't feel like making any trades uh, for yeah, either I mean, players saw, or money. We talked right. about we Yogi talk, Yogi Ferrell for the we, Mavs. We, we it's, they're lot, out there. Hold on, we talking a lot about Carmelo Anthony. It's other players that's names are being mentioned too, as far as being traded. Drew Holiday. Right. I mean, not just him. You got Demarcus Cousins, whose names uh, been thrown out there as well. But I thought he was having this big monster contract with the Kings. No, none, none more. I mean, his name is still out there. You never know, man. You don't know what's you know. You never know what these teams are gonna are gonna do because he he's always Hard seems to, he always seems to, to be a, he always seems to be a hmm. distraction with them. So I mean, his name has been thrown out there. You know, it's possible that you know he, he you know the Wizards you know came up that he could go end up going to the Wizards or something like that. I mean, it's just talk and speculation at this point. Trade deadline is like in a couple weeks. It's like right after All Star break. So. I mean, you got other other players out here that's uh that's being positioned to possibly move, and then you've seen the stuff with uh Derrick Rose saying like you know with this rebuild, he he could be leaving. You know, he probably won't be back after this season. I said that too. I said he's only. Gonna I don't think anybody thought he was gonna stay anyways. He's yeah. too much money. Yeah, he's not gonna. Nobody's gonna pay him the money that he that he wants to. You know that he wants. Um, you got the Warriors. They let go of Anderson Vergeau. So, I mean, you know that's one of LeBron's guys. So, yeah, because JaVale McGee is playing now. Yeah, <laughs> He's McGee actually playing. Ball, they like, man, we don't even need you, fella. Right. So, yeah, man. It's interesting. I, I think that DeMarcus Cousins is uh, – I, I would hope that he would eventually get traded. We were just talking about that before the show. Uh, Sacramento Kings, that was such a terrible organization when it comes to big. Like, they give, they give away so many great players, and you still Whoa. fail to actually build something good around DeMarcus Cousins. Um, I don't even know why he's been there for that long. Like, he's always seems to be frustrated at his situation. Like, DeMarcus Cousins is going to get points regardless, and he's developed a three now. Like, DeMarcus Cousins is a freaking beast, but – it's like it, I kind of feel like it's still up to him. Like if you're getting frustrated, why don't you try to leave then? But uh, I feel like the Kings, out of all the people that they did let go, I kind of feel like they want to just hold on to him. What the, okay, when, he, when, he had, when he had when he had um when he had what was that fucking coach uh Carmelo and them old coach um goddamn I be forgetting these motherfuckers What's your name like, uh, uh was it George Carl George Carl, Carl yeah when it was George Carl I can understand it because he had issues with a lot of players. He he he's a he's a dickhead. You you seen that shit he did? With I've that I've heard things about head. him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he he's a dickhead for real. Um, I can understand it because none of those players liked him. You know what I mean, he was an asshole. But now you got a good coach over there, but it came over there from the Grizzlies, and um, you got a good coach over there. And if you still getting into it, you still doing it. It's it's just more mental. And then we, I, it's just more mental with that dude, man. Like he's the best center to me in the league, but. Only a handful of teams is going to want to deal with that, that shit that comes along with it, that whole circus act. Like, cause that dude's like bipolar, yo, for real. Like, one minute he's cool, next minute he just spies out for no reason. Uh, also, I just seen that Zach Levine got a torn ACL, too. So, he's done for the year. Ooh, that's Damn. Cool. Well, is that your boy? Did you have him on your team? Zach Levine, y'all. Nope. <laughs> okay, I thought you had him in front of ain't on my team. No. Um, he's actually on the two team on playing this, this week. <laughs> Okafor. Okafor's name has been thrown around trades also out of yeah, Philadelphia. Philly, Philly needs to dump off them big, definitely. Mm-hmm. And he's, But you know what? He's the. It's I funny because the Sixers have been talking Chicago. about trading one of their centers for a long time and they never did because everybody gets hurt. Yeah, y'all, yeah, that that's exactly <laughs> the point. Like, I'm surprised they came on to a bead for so long and B came in. This is first year playing. Uh, Nerlens came in and was hurt. Like, it was ridiculous how he'll many bigs they picked up and they just got though. hurt. It won't be before, it won't be before over. Oka Ford. Yeah, yeah before be, Oka Ford and Nerlens. He, he's went on record by saying he isn't happy with the minutes he's getting and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's... once a bead actually started playing, boy, you ain't getting nothing. He, and, B, and the funny thing is, Okafor was the one that they thought was going to replace MB, right? Because it was MB first, he got hurt right away, never saw him, and then Okafor was picked next. Yeah, yep. he didn't play for two years. Yeah. He got drafted. So, yeah, Roger that. Trust the process. I guess the process is working. Philadelphia is definitely an exciting team to watch right about now. So, uh, yeah, I like watching it be play. still ain't going to do shit. 
Probably. But wait until Simmons comes on, then then it'll be oh, fun. Uh, I, I, I'm waiting on that. I am. I'm honestly uh, yeah, waiting on that. I, I, I want to see him. I mean, my thing is, is Ben Simmons gonna live up to all this hype, or is he gonna be another Michael Beasley? Yeah, that's a good question. Or oh, what's his face? Whatever. What happened to Anthony Bennett? I heard he got cut already from. Oh, we knew he wasn't gonna be shit when they draft. I'm like, who? I can't. I mean, can you believe? All right, here's the funny thing about when LeBron left the Cavs. The Cavs had what, like three first round picks in a row or two, whatever it was. Yeah, Kyrie was the only one that was good. But man, they could have had so Wiggins. much. They could have been oh, so Wiggins, much better. Yeah. Can you imagine uh, if they actually made the right choices I, I and think, then LeBron I, went back? I, I, I want to say that you know, I kind of want to say that they they did the right thing because they got a, an established guy. But could they have won with with Tristan Thompson and and um and Kevin Love spot? I'm not sure. We'll never know. It, it'll be just be all speculation at this point. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's I hard mean, to judge. Because, man, but still, because to be man. honest with you, Wiggins has Wiggins really been the difference maker, you know, even in Minnesota right now? No, it's been Carl well, we, Anthony we Towns. It's, this, it's you know what? Now right. he's starting it's to come on, though. He's starting to come on now lately. He, no, he is. He is. But Cat, he, he's still on the show. But in, this, is uh, his in third Minnesota. Year in, this is his third year in the league. And, you know, when you were first number one pick, your name should be in the all star talks. You know what I mean? By your third season, you should be. We've well, seen some sparks, and he's even, you know, gotten a co-sign from Kobe. Kobe was like, "Yeah, he reminds me of a younger me," but he still hasn't been as consistent to to be in that All Star talk. It's been Carl Anthony Towns all this year. Carl Anthony Towns has been, out, has been averaging like thirty points. Player, Carl Anthony Towns. Uh, all oh, true, true. Anthony Davis <laughs> needs to leave. He had a chance to leave, but you know, he wanted to cash out too. Yeah, he's so, also injury so prone. Like I said, on that, he, he I don't think he's too. on the trading block though. He, yeah, he's just they, in purgatory. They, but, he's but they want to get a, well. they want, they want to get Drew Holiday though. Drew Holiday been balling out this year since they, uh, since AD been hurt. Uh, hey, I hope they Ace, 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 Ace. Did you look at the, look at the Discord? Oh no, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. he, he bounced. Yeah, he, had, yeah, he had, he had the point. So. Yeah, <laughs> he, about, he had to go get that that Sonic the Hedgehog Mega Man uh, cutting the back of his head. He taking it back to the '90s, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's definitely Retro interesting. I hope, I hope that some teams make some moves. Um, it, it's going to be definitely interesting. But I'm tired of hearing about Melo. They they just need to finish <laughs> already. What's the fuck? Oh shit! All right. Uh, so I guess uh, we got anything else we want to cover before we wrap this up, man. So everybody. Any other sports? Any other sports talk topic? Uh, did y'all want to quickly talk about All Star uh, roster oh, and all? The roster, did we? Um, any, who got snubbed in the All Star? Uh, All Star thing. Did anybody get snubbed that that should have made? It? I see Carmelo didn't make it. He shouldn't have anyway. Nah, he shouldn't have made it anyways. Um, not a good dude. Anybody that should have made the All Star game? I mean, besides the obvious, as far as like Russell Westbrook should have been starting instead of coming off the bench in the All Star game over Stephen Curry. That uh, was the only one that I was mad about. To I mean, they you know, was, uh, Lillard, Lillard didn't get Lillard, it right. Yeah, but that 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 West is point guard heavy, man. Yeah, they're I mean, they're Chris, way too point guard Chris heavy. Paul, Chris Paul, you know, he was injured already, so he wasn't gonna make it. But and beat I mean, everybody say and beat, yeah. Embiid. I don't. I don't think so. I. I don't think so because until MB starts playing, yeah, like he, he, you gotta play. Yeah, you the biggest one for me was Rudy. Rudy ball. Gobert. He was. I mean, because he's been dominant the whole season. Yeah, but they are they really gonna have two Utah Jazz players playing? Um, Gordon Hayward at nah. Gordon, because I think Gordon Hayward was a little more deserving. But at the same time, um, how many centers do they? I mean, they they got centers like they got DeAndre Jordan and who else in the West at center playing? The market right? So I mean, I feel like that's enough. I think in the East, they don't have. Uh, I think in the East, somebody got snubbed out of the East, a center. With Dwight Howard? Fuck no. Uh, <laughs> I can't think of who the hell it is though, man. It's on the tip of my tongue. It's a center that should have made it. I just honestly can't think of who it is. Andre Drummond. That's who it is. Andre Drummond should have hey. made the All Star. Should have made the All Star team. But Kemba Walker made it for the first time. Shout out to him. He's been balling. I seen him put uh, Steph Curry on his heels. Nah, uh, it ain't White Side. White Side better Carl too. Did Towns make it? Did, did, did he get snubbed? Did he make it? I'm pretty sure. I don't sure think he, he made it. There's, that's a snub know what? for sure. I'm pretty sure he, he did. It, if he didn't make it, then that's a snub too out of the West. Yeah. Um, ask the chat. Hey, chat. Who did did, did uh, Cat make I, it? I don't know. He might not have. I'm looking at it you right now. Let me, let me. 
I mean, look, because we just you just named you just named two centers, and you know they they're real picky with centers. They'll they'll have Cat not make it just because he's a center. Yeah, that's some bullshit. Because he definitely should have made it. Yep. Oh no, because they picked yeah they picked the Teta Combo to start. Is he on the is he on the um? That's the East. It yeah. But who's uh who's in the backcourt though for the East? I don't think I don't think Carl Anthony Towns made it. Crazy, that's crazy, man. He okay, was, well, he yeah, was all right, well, there's, yeah, that might be another snub. Um, who are the participants in the? I mean, a three-point shootout. It's the, pretty much the same dudes you see every year. Steph three, didn't. Steph said Steph, he's not doing. Man, he 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 don't need to be. He ain't got nothing else to prove. He proved it. <laughs> right. Um, the the what you call it? The dunk contest. You got Aaron Gordon coming back. Of course, Zach Levine won't be in any more dunk contests. He got the torn ACL. Um, you got uh, what's this dude name from Phoenix? Uh. Booker? No, 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 no. It's a dude that came from the D League. Um, shit, he came from the it's, D League. Uh, it's Derek Jones. Derek Jr. Jones, yeah. He he got some bounce. I mean, if anybody gonna get Aaron going to run for his money, it's gonna be him. And who else made it? Shit, I actually wasn't even gonna talk about. You got line. you got Aaron Gordon, DeAndre Jordan, and Derek DeAndre Jones, Jones, and Glenn Robinson. And Glenn Robinson the third, yeah. Oh, he's actually Glenn yeah. Robinson. Wow. Yeah, yep. big dog son. So those are your slam dunk uh, participants. I thought Larry Nance. I thought Larry Nance Jr. was gonna actually be in it. Be but he's been he's been injury prone too. Yeah. So, so I thought he probably got up. Yeah. So like I said, I, I didn't have this up in front of me, so that's why I couldn't remember who was all in it. Because normally I write it down, but I, we really wasn't gonna talk about this because this was supposed to be done like fairly quickly. So <laughs> there you have it. Make your picks. We all know Aaron Gordon should win this, bar anything stupid happening. But don't sleep on Derrick Jones. I seen him in the uh, D League dunk contest. He's pretty nasty, yo. So that's yeah, because I, I was sleeping on Aaron Gordon last year. I didn't know he could dunk like I, this. I remember so. tweeting that up to people. I'm like, yo, don't sleep on Gordon. He got some stuff because I seen him when he was uh, in the college dunk contest when he was in Arizona. Yeah, D man told me that. I was like, yeah, I, I must have been sleep. I ain't peep. <laughs> said nobody over six eight should should be in it. I, I beg to differ. Look at what Dwight Howard did. Look at I yeah. mean, do your homework. Look at what Sean Kemp used to do. So Sean Kemp was that Sean dude. Kemp. I mean, man. you gotta do your homework, I'll, man. You can't, I don't know necessarily. No, they no, Jordan no, got some moves. That like, that's me it? and you. That's our time now. <laughs> yeah, we old, bro. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so that's pretty much, man. We just gonna wrap it up with that, man. Hopefully, y'all all enjoyed this stuff, man. We gonna kick it out of here. JG, you wanna say peace out to the people? Yeah, uh, appreciate y'all coming through, and uh, yeah, we out. All right, Siggy. Closing statement. Yeah. Yes, uh, once again, I shout out to Cap for being Dominican. You know, that's me too, Dominican. Also, Horford's Dominican for the chat. Somebody mentioned Dominican players. There you go. All right. Well, I'm not Dominican, so shout out to myself. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, we're going to end it with this, man. So, yeah, hopefully, y'all enjoyed this. We'll get another one to y'all when some, some, some decent news, when some decent news come about. Appreciate everybody in the Twitch stream watching this live. Everybody in YouTube, you know what I'm saying? Sound off in the comments. And we out, y'all. Peace. Bye. Bye.